um, they speak about the urban, the transformation of the urban landscape in the next city. And so I want to actually go back uh, uh, to Hannah's talk yesterday as well and look at it in terms of how do we look at, at the ecological structures of systems and how, are the, how do we, uh, the repair of those systems negotiate in the narratives uh, around that. Uh, and so I want to set up an uh, the, the, uh, the theoretical framework around ecological urbanism that was established, that, that, that is kind of a newer book around uh, it was published in 2010 at the GSD, uh, which was uh, essays compiled uh, around how do we, this idea of how do we reconcile uh, two systems, the function of the urban system and the function of the natural system. Because, you know, in the history of cities, it hasn't necessarily uh, worked out too well, right? So I want to start out, before I go into Mexico City, uh, I'm mean, talking about LA. This is an image of LA. This is a map of LA in 1873. And I put, show this slide because this was the plaza during the Mex uh, uh, basically the Spanish and Mexican core of LA. Uh, and what you're seeing here is this like beginning of this inlay of the American grid, grid pattern. Uh, and what eventually happened is this landscape was transformed. That is the LA River. Uh, that, that, that's how it is today. And I just want to look at, uh, show a couple slides of the proposed LA River Restoration Project, which is one of the largest city restoration projects in the United States. And this will take a lot of, uh, a lot of years. But one of the ideas is how do you re-stitch community fabrics from Chicano neighborhoods like Arroyo Seco to the, the core of the plaza. Uh, and they're talking about even daylighting and reconstructing some of the original irrigation systems of the acequia. So that's kind of, uh, you know, how do we understand that? So now I want to kind of switch gears if we're taking that as a theoretical perspective. How do we place that in one of the most challenging cities to repair an ecological system? Uh, how many of you are familiar with Mexico City's history? Just to raise a hand. Okay, quite a few. So, um, um, so my talk, so I want to start off with this slide. This is this image of what's depicted of the original lake footprint of Texcoco in Mexico City with the original uh, kind of land formation of uh, Tenochtitlan. Um, and so if we look at the aerial photo, that there was a erasure, actual erasure of that lake, right? You see some, some, some remnants of, of the lake, and I'll talk about that. This is an image just showing from an aerial photo, part of the urban footprint overlaid the, what would be the, the lake footprint and what would exist. So what I want to do is talk about the morphological built environment and how, and how uh, in, in one of the largest cities in the world and how that means, how might uh, the city start negotiating the restoration of ecological systems. Uh, so with that, I want to talk about the morphology of kind of what I call three kind of core urban forms, what you know, generally was the historic core, uh, then the early, what I call the first generation of informal settlements, and then the later informal settlements that kind of now are occupying uh, even outside of what was be the historic, um, the historic lake. This is kind of just a, an image that I grabbed from uh, uh, the UN Global Report on Human Settlements and a report in 2003. If you look at it, it kind of shows you the evolution of the core, even in of the core of the city in 1910, and just how rapid uh, growth in Mexico City occurred, uh, and what was the type of that form. Uh, so uh, I want just to talk about uh, the, myth the, the mythology that formed Mexico City. Uh, the Aztecs uh, migrated to Mexico City aligned themselves with, uh, uh, with different tribes, and then over time built power and began, uh, eventually became uh, a tribe that dominate, dominated uh, uh, the Mexico the city region. Uh, but one of the things that they did is they were, you know, the Aztecs also started, they were the first folks that started manipulating the landform in the lake. So if you look at this image, this is an image of the landform building process of the Aztecas, the Aztecs. They were called Chinampa. So what it was, was actually uh, where you get uh, uh, biomass along with, uh, with, with soil and start forming uh, uh, networks of agricultural fields and also in terms of, that would be the bed of supporting the, uh, the built form of Tichinochi's line. 
Uh, but you know that changed in, in, in 1524 with the uh, this is the plan of Cortez uh, as depicted in, a, uh, in, in 1524 in terms of the relationship of Tenochtitlan um, relationship to the lake. Uh, as you know, right off the bat, the Spanish started altering the landscape. Uh, I got this map from uh, it, 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 this map comes from about uh, the 15, 1554 where there was a lot there was actually um, a, a, a family of Aztecs that brought suit against the, the Spanish because they were alternating the Chinampas. So this is actually an image depicting what the lands were being altered. Uh, and so you could see some how, how basically agricultural fields uh, were, were plotted out and, and, and platted. Well, if we kind of move through history, this is a depiction, an illustration of Mexico City in 1624. So how did they start doing it? Well, immediately the Spanish start tearing apart the temples and start using that as the framework of building more land for them. I mean, so uh, you know, basically the erasure of, of that architecture uh, and that landscape start becoming the, the foundation of, uh, of the core of the city. What I think is interesting about this illustration, you start seeing kind of the depictions of the Aceca irrigation network, uh, aqueducts, kind of the layout of the plaza, um, and still, you know, you can still, even through this illustration, see the significant uh, uh, form of the lake uh, around uh, Mexico City. So what are the kind of the, 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 uh, the conditions or the regulatory structures that form the built environment? We can go back to the Leyes de las Indias, the laws of the Indies, to look at how, it, how public space and how block structure was occurred. Uh, how, uh, how it was developed. This is an image of the plan of, of Guadalajara in seven, uh, 1741, and we could see how you know the how the block structure was pretty orthogonal uh, and established the core. This is uh, again an, an image showing the the plaza, which was a little bit bigger in scale, uh, the central plaza of Mexico City, with an image that formed the great public space that uh, Ivan just talked about. Uh, and as we see, Mexico goes through this history in the 19th century of kind of transforming the landscape and, and, and trying to save itself from flood. There's always this occurrence of constantly uh, re rebuilding the city in terms of its flood, uh, uh, the flooding problem. But what's interesting is that if you go to the late uh, uh, the 19th century, it's interesting to see how these global perspectives uh, are, are, are overlaid on the city. You can look at the, the plan of Barcelona and you can start seeing the, the influences of uh, the Baroque structure in the city and how that began to transform even the boulevards through like uh, streets like uh, Paseo de la Reforma. Um, and at time, uh, what, what eventually, so here's a, an image of the construction of the Gran Gasawa. So Mexico's building the city and constantly trying to build this massive infrastructure to drain uh, to drain the lake and protect the urban form that's established. And you can see, interesting to see when you map out the morphology from the, eight, uh, uh, the 1700s, and you can actually see a receipt, uh, uh, how the city recedes in terms of some of the building footprints. This goes into uh, the core of the city in 1970. But you can see in that evolution that the city is struggling to maintain it, 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 its building form uh, uh, in negotiating that with the natural landscape. But what happens uh, in Mexico City's history that kind of caused it to uh, become this, this uh, mega city it is today is that Mexico City made a decision to centralize its industrial development around Mexico City. And that's the reason you have this constant migration, this constant migration in the city. So what happens when you get into the 30s and the 40s, you have this huge uh, rural migration of the city and you have the first developments of the informal settlements. Probably the most well-known uh, uh, settlement that was established in the in the 50s is uh, Neza Settlement, which really it was back in that idea of the UN uh, concept of sites or for services, where you just kind of laid out the blocks and that you know folks would kind of uh, 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 matriculate and, and, and organize uh, the uh, the structure on the block. Well, we can even see through 1960s this the evolution of this slum condition of open sewer in the street to what it is today, kind of this, uh, this, uh, this, this evolution. However, this 
constant migration has, hasn't stopped. So now we're starting to see the, uh, up into the hillsides, the development of what's called the uh, colonios populares. It's the Mexican term for the favela, right? So as we see this constant pressure, uh, this is kind of the urban landscape or the morphology uh, that, 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 relate, that, that supports the current development. I just kind of show some images. These are all uh, showing the block structures, comparing these kind of like uh, the, 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 the scale of a 1500 by 1500 foot area to get an idea about the block structures and the, the formality of the, of, of the colonial core, uh, the relationship of kind of the block structure within uh, informal settlements, and then, try, and then looking at uh, kind of the condition of the, the informal condition that's makes up a large portion of the city, if you look at that UN habitat map that I showed. And it's not that the city hasn't, uh, or hasn't, and Mexico as a nation, hasn't tried to uh, create formal housing as an intervention. You know, if you look at Infonativ, it's probably one of the, you know, it, it, it's way more successful than our housing and urban development programs in providing housing based on the worker taxation that they, uh, that they provide. So, you know, there are a lot of uh, interventions to provide housing, a lot of those those strategies actually copy American strategies for housing, but um, you know, in that process, they just can't keep up, and the city is just continually being impacted by growth. Uh, so, what's going on now is there actually is a conversation about how do you go back and you know uh, restore some of the natural systems uh, in the city. Uh, and if you look at outside of the city, there still are some areas where the Chin Chinampas exist. This is Chinampas of San Salvador, uh, in, uh, on the outskirts of the city. Uh, this is the Chima uh, Chinampas of uh, Coyotepec, uh, where we can see how some of the structure still is intact. But the challenge overall in the city is, if you're going to employ a restoration of the lake, ultimately there's going to be a negotiation of, of, of form on a huge scale. And uh, so this is an image uh, from Naki Architects, which was a design competition that looks at the, this is just a visualization of how that restoration might occur. So what I, what I just want to point out in my talk is, you know, the, how do we look at ecological urbanism as a theoretical framework in the city? Uh, and how does that relate into these other uh, negotiations of, 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 of discourse around reconciliation. I think, uh, I think both of the other two presenters actually looked at the conflict of space and also uh, how, do you, how do you look at the erasure of past popul of other populations. Well here it's erasure of the built environment and how's that uh, and the natural environment and how again do we think about the restoration of these systems. Thank you. Who was that image? Which one? The last one. So what happened to the human settlements? Uh, over time, this is a speculation, uh, how over time those settlements are erased and, and, and ecological systems are put in place. But what's you know, important about that is what is that negotiate? What is the erasure of the folks that are there and how does that happen? So it puts another level of complexity. Erasure of neighborhood, erasure of social fabric, uh, and, and how does that really relate to the restoration of that system. So not only do you know, are we constant this constant con, uh, contest of of you know erasure of 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 um, of, of different in this case you know it would be the, the informal settlements. But how's that again negotiated on this large scale? It's, so I just want to put out the complexity that you know when you put it into practice. You know, it's great as a theoretical framework, but that's what you need the practice of it is very much more complex. That's what you need system. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>